A couple of weeks ago, I showed you a tip for how to calculate day over day change, and we built these three KPI cards. The problem though, is that this always assumes you're gonna have data on weekends. But in a lot of companies, there are no sales on the weekends. So when you're on a Monday, we should be comparing it to the previous Friday. In this tip, I'm gonna show you how to calculate day over day change, excluding the weekends. If you're new here, my name's Andy. I'm the global head coach of the data school. I created this channel to help you become great at Tableau. I create lots of content every week, so be sure to subscribe and follow along. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like. It'll help me understand the kind of content that you want to see more of. Let's get started. The first thing I want to explain to you is how Tableau deals with weekdays. So you see here in the view, we have Monday through Friday, but I need to know the day number for each weekday. To do that, I'm going to create a calculated field. It's not necessary to follow along in these steps. I just want you to understand what Tableau is doing. So I'm going to call this weekday number. To get the weekday number, I'm going to use the date part function. And then the part I'm going to evaluate is the weekday. And then the field I want to evaluate is the order date. Click on OK. Now Tableau puts this down here in the measures because it's returning a number. And whenever you write a calculation that returns a number, Tableau assumes it's something you want to aggregate but we don't want to aggregate it. We want these to be distinct items. So let's drag weekday up to the dimensions. If I drag weekday number to the rows, you'll now see Monday is a two and Friday is a six. So that means Saturday is seven and Sunday is one. So the situation we need to account for then is when our latest day is a Monday, we want to get sales for the previous Friday. So now we know we need to check for the number two. Okay, so here we have a table of sales by order date and I've included the weekday. If I go to the very bottom, you'll see my latest day is a Monday. I want to be able to compare that to a Friday. Now you want to start following along. Let's create a new calculated field. Let's call it the latest day. Our calculation is simply mustachio max of order date. And then close off the mustachio. The reason we want to make this a level of detail expression is because we want to look at the entire data set and bring back that one date. Click on OK. If I right click and drag latest day to the rows and choose latest day discrete, then notice how everything returns the same date. That's what our level of detail expression is doing. It's ignoring every dimension in the view and just bringing back the maximum date. Now let's get the sales for the latest date. Create a new calculated field and let's call it sales for latest day. The function is integer and then order date equals our latest day. So that's saying if the order date is equal to the latest day, close off the integer and multiply that by sales. So let me explain what this integer is doing. Inside of the integer, we have order date equals latest day. That's going to either be true or it's going to be false. When we wrap that in an integer, Tableau converts true to one and false to zero. Therefore, if you're the latest day, it returns a one. We multiply that by sales and we get sales. If you're any other date other than the latest day, it's going to return zero because it's false. And then zero times sales is always going to be zero. Click on OK, and I'm going to drag that onto the table. And now if you look at the very bottom, you'll see that I have sales for my latest day of 815. OK, great. The next thing we want to do is get the weekday number for the latest day. So let's create a new calculated field. I'm going to call it weekday for latest day. I'm going to write the calculation similar to the weekday number we got before. So date part, weekday, and then this time we're going to evaluate the latest day. Click on OK and drag that up to the dimensions. Now if I drag that to the view, you'll see my latest day is 2. That means it's a Monday. So now that we know which weekday our latest day is, we can get the previous day. Create a new calculated field. Call this one previous day. Our calculation here is if the weekday for the latest day is equal to 2. So then we're going to look at our latest day and subtract 3. Else, we're going to look at our latest day and subtract 1. And click on OK. Let's right click and drag previous day to the rows. Choose previous day discrete and click on OK. And now notice our previous day is December 23rd. If I look at the very bottom of my view, that's the way it is. December 26th is a Monday. December 23rd is a Friday. Now that we know the previous day, we can get the previous day sales. I'm going to duplicate sales for the latest day and then edit the copy. Rename it sales for previous day. And the only thing we need to replace here is previous day will replace latest day. 
click on OK, and let's drag that onto the table as well. And now we can see we have our sales for our previous day. We've got pretty much everything we need now to build the view. Let's start with a new sheet. Right click and drag latest day to the text shelf and choose latest day discrete. Right click and drag previous day to the text shelf and choose previous day discrete. Drag sales for the latest day to the text shelf. And then we want to create the change. So create a new calculated field. I'm going to call it day over day change. This calculation is the sum of the sales for the latest day minus the sum of the sales for the previous day. Click on OK. Write one more calculation. This one is day over day change percent. This is going to be my day over day change divided by the sum of the sales for the previous day. Click on OK. Right click on that new field, choose default properties, and then number format. Let's make it a percentage to one decimal. Click on OK. Now drag that day over day change percent to the text shelf. The last thing we want to do is color code the text based on whether it's positive or negative change. So create one more calculated field. Let's call it positive change. The formula is simply the day over day change percent is greater than zero. Click on OK. Drag that field to the color shelf. Click on the text shelf and choose the three dots. Now we just need to rearrange a few things. I'm going to move everything down and just type in the word sales so that we know what we're looking at. I'm going to put the date for the latest day underneath of sales. Give myself a bit more space. Move my sales for the latest day as the next field. And then we have our day over day change versus, and I'm going to move up my previous day to that row. Now we just need to do a bit of formatting. My sales for the latest day, I'm going to make that a nice big number and maybe make it bold. I'm going to make sales 12, the latest day, maybe I'll leave that at nine. And then my percent change, let's maybe make that 14. Click on okay. And then click on the alignment and choose center for horizontal and center for vertical. Now notice our sales looks a bit weird. That's because I forgot to format the number. Right click on sales for latest day in the data pane, choose default properties, number format. Choose number custom, zero decimals, and I'm gonna put in a dollar sign for the prefix. Click on okay. And now you can see we had $815 in sales on December 26th, and that is 58% down versus December 23rd. Now our color is blue. So double click on the color shelf and let's make the false red, meaning it's a negative change and then click on OK. Great, so now we're all done. But we need to double check and make sure this works when the latest day is not Monday. So I'm gonna go back to my sheet that has all of my dates in it, and I'm gonna randomly exclude a few. I'm gonna get rid of December 26th and December 23rd. I'm gonna go ahead and exclude those. Make sure your order date field is in context, and then apply to worksheets all using this data source. Go back over to our new view, and now it's a positive number, and December 22nd was 248% higher than December 21st. I hope you found this tip useful, and now you should know how to compute day-over-day -day chains, excluding weekends. If there's anything else you'd like to know, please leave me a comment, and I'll do my best to either create a video or get back to you. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like. That'll help other people find it too. Have a great day.